Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and this is a video for amateur photographer on using Affinity Photo 2. In this video, I'm looking at the Develop Persona, and in particular, why this is separate to the Photo Persona, and the best way to use the Develop Persona's tools. Now, most of your editing work in Affinity Photo will be done in the regular Photo Persona. This is where you get the full range of adjustment tools, layers and masks, filter effects and more. But raw files are a special case. Raw files have to be processed or developed before you can work on them. If you open a JPEG or a TIFF image in Affinity Photo, it will appear straight away in the Photo Persona. But if you open a raw file, it will open in the Develop Persona first. Here you can make adjustments directly to the raw image and then hit the develop button to pass a processed version on to the photo persona. The develop persona is not really designed for dramatic transformations, but to enhance your raw files to properly bring out their colors and details ahead of any other editing work you might want to do. Raw files can sometimes look pretty flat and disappointing straight from the camera. And this is your chance to bring them to life and make full use of all that extended raw image data. You don't have to make any adjustments at all in the develop persona if the image already looks fine. But if the white balance or exposure is wrong or there's missing highlights or shadow detail, this is the one place where Affinity Photo has access to all the image data in a raw file and can use this to the maximum. You can use the panels in the develop persona in any order. But to explain what they do, let's tackle them in order from left to right. Let's start with the basic panel. As the name suggests, this is where you carry out basic adjustments to the photo's colours, white balance, exposure and more. You don't have to use every tool in every section. This image looked dark, so I used the exposure slider in the exposure section, but then left the enhanced section sliders alone. Be aware that if you want to adjust the white balance and shadows and highlights, you need to click the checkbox next to the section name or the sliders won't do anything. Afterwards, you can use the checkboxes to show or hide the effect. The lens panel is where you can check or correct any lens aberrations. Almost all lenses these days benefit from digital corrections and some mirrorless lenses even require them. Affinity Photo will try to find a matching lens correction profile automatically using the EXIF shooting data in the image file and you should see it displayed here. If so, then you don't need to do anything else. If not, then you can use the sliders below to apply manual corrections. Raw photos can look a little soft when you first open them up, while high ISO photos can look a little noisy. You can fix both issues in the details panel. First, check the box next to the detail refinement section. Then use the radius and amount sliders. The effect is immediate and impressive. If you see more noise as a result, just nudge the luminance slider in the noise reduction section below. Affinity Photo is very good at both sharpening and noise control, and a few adjustments here can make a really big difference. The Tones panel has a whole series of controls, but the one I'm going to take a look at is the Curves tool. Zooming back out, I can see my image is just lacking a little contrast, but I can put that right in the Tones Panel's Curves tool with an S-shaped curves adjustment. You'll see this panel also has tools for black and white and split toning. But while you can get great black and white images within the Develop Persona, you get more control in the Photo Persona. The Overlays panel is where you can make local adjustments to your RAW files during processing. And this is where you get a lot of crossover with the adjustments and masking tools in the Photo Persona. You can use overlays in the Develop Persona to create masks with brush and gradient tools and then apply basic local adjustments. Here I'm using an overlay to lighten the center of the picture. The fact is though, that you'll get a lot more control over adjustments, effects and masking in the regular photo persona. So you might want to keep the overlays panel for special cases. For example, if you have an outdoor shot with an overexposed sky which you need to bring back within range while you're still working with the raw data. After all your adjustments, when you click the develop button in the develop persona, your raw file is developed and opened in the photo persona, where you can start on some more advanced editing but there's a new feature to point out first. 
Affinity Photo 2 introduces non-destructive RAW developing. If you use the new RAW Lay Embedded option in the output menu on the top toolbar in the Develop Persona, you will be able to go back later to change your RAW Develop settings. Now in a regular Photo Persona, I've added a black and white adjustment set to Hard Light Mode with a radial mask to protect the center of the photo. This is not part of the develop process, but I've done this to show that I can still redevelop the RAW file by selecting the image layer and then the develop persona. So that's it for this Affinity Photo video on develop persona basics. Thanks for watching and see you next time.